Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, bud. What's up, gang? What's up, Welcome gang? to the Grindcast. Simon, Simon Arias, Arias here. here. Get ready. It's Get a, ready. New day. a new day. What's up, gang? Welcome back to another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. And I got my friend. Terrell Edmonds, two R's, two L's. Two R's, two L's. Terrell Edmonds, first round, former first round draft pick mm-hmm. for the Steelers, current starting safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and a beast on the field and just an unbelievable human being off the field. You know, I've had an opportunity to get to know you a little bit over the last year, man, and and uh, just super impressed with with the person that you are inside and the way that you roll. We were just here chopping it up a little bit, talking about the kids' book. Mm-hmm. You know that that you came up with. Why don't we start out there? Why don't we start out with telling me what the vision was and and what the kids' book is all about and stuff like that? Man, definitely, it was definitely nice meeting you, man. Ever since I met you, you've been a real solid guy, man. Just uh, the whole friend group has just been amazing. And with the kids' book, my brothers and I, we just recently wrote it. Uh, we were all just thinking about it at the house, like how can we help? What can we do to give back? Because a lot of people gave back to us when we were younger, and now we just. Uh, put together a kids book is really for younger kids i uh, just each one of my brothers and i we just put five five morals that my family like really grew up on and you and both of the both yeah, of your brothers so it's 15 it's 15 15 morals 15 morals of just what we grew up and you on. think maybe kindergarten to about third third grade, grade. Third grade that's okay like really the the thick point of it but then you can okay. go up to fifth grade and then now I, I think that would be the max all right and it's just really just about our morals, what we grew up on, um, what we're all about, the type of people that we are. And I think that's just something big that we Man, want to I, give Man, I can't wait. We'll, we'll get to it. But, you know, I remember telling you, you know, after being around you a little while that how how special whoever helped to develop you, because mm-hmm. I, I got to meet your brother also, that somebody had to do that. Somebody somebody was special there, you know, whether it was your parents I'm or, uh, you. you know, an uncle or somebody. And the the... The difference, you know, for me that I start to try to study greatness in everything Mm -hmm. and, you know, more than it, more than the money, you know, I I try to study parenting now because I'm a, I'm a parent, you know, Mm -hmm. I got four kids and this is the first time that I've ever had an opportunity. It's not like I got a second or third run at this, but what's different is, you know, when, when I was growing up, things were different. I had had a single mom and spent some time on welfare and you know wasn't Mm -hmm. wasn't uh wasn't a perfect scenario a lot of people got it worse but what i've tried to study is people that have had successful children i try to go to those parents and pick to you know pick their brain and ask them man how did you develop so i'm looking forward to digging into you know these books may help me getting some some knowledge and some wisdom from the people that helped to develop you. I'm telling you, it's really just big on my mom and my dad. I can't only say it's them because everyone in my community really took a part in it. It takes a village. And yeah, it takes a village just to, to bring us up. And uh, just over time of growing up, no one really let us stir in that wrong direction. Everyone was always constantly, you got to do this. This is the type of person that you we want you to be. And that's just exactly how we did it. So, Man, I'm very thankful for Now, you're from Virginia. From Danville, Virginia. Small city, very soft. Danville, Virginia. Very now, soft. I know, I know uh, Coach Tomlin's also from Virginia. He's about two hours away from me, though. I remember I got to hear him speak recently last year at, at our church. He does the Man Up mm-hmm. conference and stuff. I sat re- close. I think I might have been front row. He said he was from, ba- they call it Bad News. Yeah, bad bad news, news, Virginia. Newport News. A couple man. hours away from, from you, but both from, from Virginia. So we know that you're from, from uh, Virginia. How did you get started playing football? When, when did you start playing football? How did you get interested in playing football? Man, my dad, he played football. So he played for the Miami Dolphins and Seattle Seahawks. So okay. it was always about playing football for us. Huh. When we were in the house, it was always about school. And then you got to be involved in something because he didn't want you to go out and just do whatever. So then from there, we just, all my brothers and I, we we're always competitive. Everything in the house from running from the car, from the grocery store to the car, from in the house playing the game, it was always competitive. So that was just something that we always started with. Who was the older brother? Trey. Trey's the oldest. Trey's the oldest. I'm the middle. And All then right. my younger brother, Tremaine. Tremaine's not okay. the tallest, though, so he took over everything. He's the biggest. Yeah, he's the biggest. I haven't now. met him. He's the only, only one I haven't met. So when Man. did you start playing Football? Did you start whenever you can put on a helmet and shoulder pads? Five, six years old. Five, six years old. Early, and it's it been on. going on. And it's just been going on ever since. Every sport, just going on okay. ever since. So, speaking of the your brothers, mm-hmm. I don't know how many times this has happened. I just I can't remember it happening. But it, it, three brothers 
all of y'all was in la- last year all playing at the same time in the NFL. You got all three of you guys mm-hmm. in the NFL at the same time. Mm-hmm. I mean, just just crazy, crazy special. That got to be super cool for your parents to 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 see and watch. Man, it's a blessing. Uh, I can't be thankful enough because just being out there and seeing our dreams act, our dreams actually come true is just amazing. Uh, everything that we talked about when we were younger and now we're finally achieving it and we can do it on the highest level is just amazing. My parents are there definitely blessed they're definitely thankful and we're just happy that we could do it the 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 thing that was the most impressive you know with you was other than that big ass chain that you had when i first (laughs) when i first met you uh was was just the the humility that you carry yourself with man in your heart it's like your spirit walks before you Mm -hmm. it's you could just feel good vibes good energy good heart good soul good good spirit good everything around you it just kind of walks with you and then your brother's the exact same way Mm -hmm. so now we get into talking about what what things can you offer that you remember look looking back on it you know what things did did your parents instill in you? And we could we could read some of those things in the book. But what what things stick out to you that your parents gave to you guys? Man, really, always just being a good person. Um, you know, just as well as I know, um, as quick as you as you can get it is just as fast as you can lose it. So you always got to be thankful. You always got to be uh, humble about it. You don't want to be that type of guy that's always bloating and talking about it all the time. You want to be the type of guy, the same that's in private that you see every day. Uh, I don't want to have two different faces. When you see me out, I'm one way, and when I'm at home, one way. I just want to be the same person all the time, and that's the way I try to carry myself no matter who I'm around, no matter if I'm with my friends. I don't want to be a, a two different type of people. I try to be the same person at all times. Who was the disciplinarian? My mom. Mom was yeah, the, mom, mom she, laid the hammer. She laid the okay. hammer. And dad, when, when dad spoke, he was, that was the final word. Whenever he spoke, you know, that's the final word. But mom, she's the one that's going to nag you about it some. And you know, we like pulling teeth from mom sometimes. Uh huh. But when dad spoke, he like. That really was it. That was, the, that was yeah, the, that's that's the, that's the, that's that was the final down. verdict. Yeah, that's the foot down. Or okay. Whatever he said, that's the final verdict. There's no going back. There's no trying to pull teeth from him. But my mom, she's the one that really stayed on it. And if, whenever you meet my mom, you'll see she's always on point about everything she's always very direct she's asking a million questions she's going to make sure that you're looking out for me the same way that i'm looking out for you gotta do that yeah gotta do that what what do you think you picked up from your dad other than the game of football man just how to be a man uh how to treat a woman for one uh how to carry myself in a room uh with other men looking other men in the eyes when you talk to them uh, just everything about how to become a man and and how to carry yourself out in the world because it's a lot that goes on and you can very, you can you can meet a lot of different people that can try to steer you in the wrong direction, but you oh. just gotta know yourself, how to become yourself, and I think that's a big thing I learned from my dad. Being in the NFL, you know, first round draft pick, starting for the Steelers. I mean, that's a that's a that's a dream come true for you. And, dream come true. And uh, what what things stick out to you that people miss about that? You know, a lot of times they may say, "Oh man, you're." You're lucky, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and you are blessed and, you know, in a, in a good situation. But not everybody that had good genes, not mm-hmm. everybody that had good athletic ability gets drafted in the first round, starts, you know, and has had a good successful career and all of that stuff. What things do you think people miss, you know, that, that they don't see when they think, oh, you're just lucky you get to play for the Steelers because you, you're tall, you're big or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. What things do you think people miss in that process? Really everything in the background. A lot of times people only see the finished product. They don't see you going up in there at 5.30 in the morning trying to watch extra film. They don't see you working out after everyone's leaving. They don't see you in high school doing extra sprints after practice trying to get to that point that you want to be. A lot of times they just see the finished product and they're just thinking that you were gave that. But a lot of times it's a lot of hard work. Even to, even to this day, um, you can attest to that. Just It's a lot of hard work every day. You got to have your mindset right and you have to have that vision and you have to have goals that you're going to achieve. Even if it's maybe having five tackles this game and I only had two last game, I have to go out there and I have to really work and figure out what can I do to make those five tackles. And no matter what, I can't let anything stop me from that. And that's just my mindset. So you're setting goals for setting yourself goals going into the game, you every know, day. speaking about every a game, you're coming into a game with a goal yeah, mentally for goals. yourself. I'm setting goals every game. I'm setting goals every practice. Um, even if it's in practice, let's just say a play. All right, I messed up on this play yesterday in practice. Today, this is Get my better main focus. That. I'm not going to mess up this play at all. Every time they call this play, I'm going to be 100% on this, and I'm going to be locked in at, because I messed up yesterday. I'm not going to mess up again. And that's just the mindset that I try to take into it. And just every day, whatever I focus on that day, 
that's when I'm gonna get better at it, and I'm not gonna let anyone stop me with it. What sacrifices have you had to to make in the process to get to where you are? What sacrifices do you currently make right now in order to continue to be successful? Man, let's just start back in high school. In high school, just the sacrifices of everyone wants to go out. I was going out some in high school, but my parents they were really honest about you got to stay at the house. You got to clean up before you go out. You got to do different things before you go out and you got to separate yourself because if you do the same thing as everyone else, you might have that same end result. So it was just different sacrifices in that. And even when we went to college. So when we were in college now. Did everybody go to Virginia Tech? We all went to Virginia Tech. All three of y'all. All three of us okay. went to Virginia Tech. All right. So now we're at college and now it's like you're by yourself. You make your own decisions. But you still have those small points that your parents in the back of your head is just talking to you like, okay, if you go do this, if you go out all night and then you come to, come to meetings late, you go to practice late then you might ultimately not get to where you really want to go. So it's just always those sacrifices every day of just uh, get where you want to go. Always making those small sacrifices. What, well, speaking of sacrifices in season, mm -hmm. you, you know, we, we have mutual friend in, in uh, Shazier, and you know, yeah. me and him have had this conversation on and off the air. Um, what, is the, what does the season schedule look, look like? Like when it's in season, give me like, it don't have to be detailed, but you know, Monday through Sunday, what is that grind like? What are those sacrifices like? What, is that, what does that look like? It's all day. You got to, because they, they're not really on your back because you're, you're a grown man now. Yep. So now you got to dedicate yourself to watch film at the house by yourself. You got to dedicate yourself to go in and get your lift in. You got to dedicate yourself to get on the jug machine after practice. You just have to dedicate yourself to go out there and become the player you are because if you just, if you just waste your time every day, you'll get passed by. It'll show. Yeah, it'll show and you'll get passed by. And a lot of times people get passed by just simply because they're not putting in the work. Once you make it at, to a certain point, they just think that's it. But it's never made really, it there. Yeah, we cool now. But it's not. There's no true selling on anyone. No Everyone doubt. can. You can keep on growing every day, and that's just the biggest thing that you have to have in your mindset. And in your mindset of having that vision that is always room to get better. And you never want to get comfortable. Or you never want to settle. And that's just the biggest thing of the sacrifices every day, every day throughout the week. I think about it, you know, sometimes, and it's like, all right, if you got, what do they do now? Five or six preseason games. Yeah, five or six Everybody preseason five games. Year, five. 16 game season yep. you got to buy yep. so there's 17 weeks yep. really 17 weeks plus the five that's 22 weeks if you go to the playoffs so much you know you on your body you, you talking about 20 massages. 25 weeks out of the year it's only 52 weekends mm -hmm. is when the games are played yep. so you 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 zoned in on weekends they like yep. you just can kick it on saturday and stay up all night if you got a game you on sunday you're traveling you know back and forth and stuff like that Talk talk about that. Like, you know, how many weekends in a row are you zoned in working? How many things do you need to miss? There's probably times you got friends that got birthday parties you can't yeah. make it to, or you know, like we were talking about on the phone, like you you can't make it to every single yeah, you know, every you single thing. It to, you can't make it to every every single event because, and the people around you should know that you can't make it there because they know the type of person that you're trying to be, and it's just a lot of sacrifices. Like Thursdays, maybe you can't go out to eat with your with your friends that night because you got to go lock in and you got to be ready for Friday's practice. And you can't go out and drink all night or you can't go out and party all night because you can't do that and be the type of football player you want to be because next day of practice, you're going to be lazy, you're going to be tired, and you got to be focused, you got to be locked in every day because one mistake in our game, you can be hurt, you can be injured, and everything can be done for. So it's just you have to have that mindset that every play that you're out there, you got to make sure you're at your peak. You got to make sure that you're on point you got to make sure that you are able to go at 24-7 pretty much. And it's just the sacrifices of every day of maybe even with your girlfriend. Your girlfriend has to understand, like, you know my girlfriend, Kayla. Like, me and Kayla, we talk all the time. But sometimes I tell Kayla, like, I have to lock in today. Like, I can't go out all night. We can't go out to eat tonight because I got to be up tomorrow morning. I can't eat a steak and let it sit on my stomach for practice tomorrow and I'll be feeling all bad. So it's just you always have to be in. And we can't text all day. Sometimes just because we're all I got to lock in on my on my work because if I in do season both, can't do it. recovery rehab training room before practice mm -hmm. practice game film all of that stuff all of that how many hours you think that's taken you know of the week if you look at you know in game in season and you count travel as work because you can't work like you can't 
do nothing if you got a plane ride you got to be mm-hmm. on like Saturday, Sunday, whatever. How many hours would you say in game, in season, in crunch time that looks like for you? I would say every day at least from 6 a.m. to at, at minimum, I would say five. But most days, I would say six to seven. You're always working. You're watching film. You're so 12 massage. hours. Yeah, easy. 12, 12 hour hours, days. 12 hours a day, easy. In season. Uh, just getting your massages, getting your body right, eating well. Um, you got to get your sleep. So you're going to sleep early. So it's everything. It's 12 hours a day, and it's over and over. And you create that schedule, and you got to stick to that schedule, or you never know what might happen. So it's no just that's, that schedule you have to stay with. No doubt. So it's, it can get monotonous. You know, you 100%. mentioned you've been playing since you were five years old, mm-hmm. 20 years. Mm-hmm. How do you stay zoned in on the monotonous things on jugs machine, backpedaling, watching film? Like these are things that you've been doing for years. Yeah. Weights, you know, same stuff. How do you marry? You know, I tell people marry the monotony. Like just get married to it, bro. Like it's it's reps. How, it's how reps. do you how do you? mentally stay zoned in on the monotony of the things that makes you good that isn't sexy like they, they may see a big game you get it you know 10 tackles couple picks you know whatever it is but what goes into that stuff is the monotonous stuff when the lights are off how do you stay with doing those things when it's monotonous and you've been doing the same stuff for 20 years honestly it's just that vision um this is the vision that i set for myself i know that i'm i can be a much better player than i am today i know that i can continue to grow i know that i continue to get better and that's just what drives me um you have people that talk all this stuff all the time about the team about whatever but it's just you have to have that that inner dog you can say Uh, that's what we call it we call it that dog inside of you that you're never comfortable you never you never settle in once you want Let's just talk numbers. Once you want one mil, you want 10. Once you want 10, you want 20. Once you want 20, you want 30. It's constantly just keep grinding. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to let anyone stop me. And I'm going to keep on going. And I'm never feeling comfortable about it. So it's getting yourself to not be comfortable, never comfortable. and complacent. Never, always never leveling complacent. up. Always saying, man, we got one. Let's go to 10. Never complacent. We got 10, go to 20. Last game. Every game can be your last game, and you got to play it just like that. Every practice can be your last practice. Every dollar can be your last dollar that you ever make. So you got to constantly just have that mindset of, I'm going to put everything in today, and whatever happens, this is I'm putting it all out there, and this is what I'm going to give them every time. What would, you, what would you say, you know, what's it like playing for Coach Tomlin? Man, he's an amazing dude. Um, he, he, wants, he wants to see you be the best player you can be. He's the type of guy that he's laughing with you, but when it's about business, it's all locked in. He's locked in, and he's going to put you in the best positions to be the best player you can be, too. What, what two or three things stick out to you, you know, that you could share with us that you've learned from Coach Tomlin? Man, just his leadership. Uh, no matter the good, no matter what's good going on or what's bad going on, he's always going to be that same person. He's going to encourage you to be the best player you can be, encourage you to be a good person in the media aspect and in the community. And just, he wants you to grow up and be a man at the end of the day. Uh, because a lot of times you come in young, uh, you get you get handed a lot of money at the beginning. So you know you could tell he cares. Yeah, he, he just He wants to develop it. the whole person. Yeah, he, he cares, cares about, about how you're doing on and off the yeah, field. He's, he's a player's coach, you can say. He's just, he cares about you and he wants you to be the best person and player you can be. And, and, and you, you think even keel? You know, as far as the, you know, not letting you get too high, not even letting kill. you get, get too even, low, you would, you would say? even kill because he knows that each week is another game. We can win by 50 points this week or we can lose by 50 points, but he know that it's the next game the next week and we got to be ready to play. Leadership is, is something that comes from a head coach. Leadership comes from being a, a starter on the team. D- describe what leadership looks like whether it's you know someone being a captain on the team or previous teams that you that you've played for like describe what being a captain looks like or what being a leader looks like to me personally a leader is someone that is just true with their self someone that's true with their self that's putting everything out there for the team someone that's coming to meetings on time someone that is uh giving everything they have at practice someone that is being on time being on time um, coming to practice every day, giving everything, giving a hundred percent, maxing out, giving a hundred percent, hundred percent, and just care about everyone else, like care about the team, because you got a lot of people that's I, 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 but you got to be about. That ain't how team. you win titles. You can't win a I. title like that. You got to grow together as a team, and you got to understand the team. And I think that that what molds a good leader. And I think that's uh, really th- what's big about Ben. 
let's just talk about Ben for a second because Ben is a great leader. He's a guy that's all about the team. He's a guy that wants the best for the team, and he's a guy that would do anything to help us win. So I think that's just big. So Ben's Ben, you would describe as one of those type of people, yeah, leadership leader. wise. He's a great brings leader. people together, cares about people. What's well his respected. What's his work ethic like? Man, he's out there working every day. You can see him in the weight room. He's out there. He talks junk with us on the field, just like he's another young guy, even though he's older now. He's talking to us on the field, but at the end of the day, you can see that he's actually having fun, but he's putting 100% and having fun, and he wants to see other guys have fun and put in 100% to help us win, and I think that's just big because if you see someone that's on your team that they're doing everything that they can to give you 100%, you want to do the same thing and not let them down, and I think that's just a big thing. With It was him. cool to see that he that uh, he resigned. Yeah, he resigned. Recently. That, I mean, I got to say a lot about yeah. the direction of the team and where – where his mindset is at. He don't got to do that. You know, th mm -hmm. I think he took a pay cut. Yeah, he took a pay He's cut. made plenty of money, you know, over the years. So I know it ain't about the money. This got to be about, this got to be about the, yeah, about he, the, about the win, about, about feel, the winning. That means he feel good about it. So that's just, we got to help Yeah. Him means he believes in the squad or you ain't, you ain't coming back. That's so that I'm means he, he, he got to believe that you guys are stacked. Be, coming into a game, how do you, how do you get yourself in the best mental state to, play a game are you are you listening to a certain type of of music do you have a routine you know that you kind of like to do you know coming into the game anything you can share with us my daily routine out before the on game day i wake up i take a shower to wake my body up to wake everything up and then my music since you're talking about music i listen to rap music all day so i'm listening like to what like what what's the game day Meek Mill. Couple, okay Meek Mill. i feel that dreams and nightmares i listen to Meek Mill's dreams and nightmares and i'm just locked in on that and i'm talking to some of my guys me and minka we're pushing each other around me and joe we're pushing each other around me and steve we're pushing each other around. dbs all dbs and we're just locked in uh we we go out there we work out together before get a nice sweat going on and we have our our five minute little talk and we just today this is what we have to do we got to show them that we're the best defensive backcourt in the nation and we just go out there and prove it you you see people that you know, they'll have a certain level of success and they don't continue to climb. They don't continue to put in that work because they've made a certain amount of money or they've had a certain amount of success. Mm -hmm. I think what's what's impressive, you know, is is, you know, it's public information. You got you signed a big contract mm -hmm. coming in first round draft pick millions of dollars and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. And, and from the outside looking in, you know, a little bit inside, I get an inside look at you. It seems like you're like you're usually always locked in. Seems like mm -hmm. you're always zoned in, focused, not going too overboard, you know, with having a good time. Seems like you're always zoned in on getting better. How have you tricked your mind or what have you, you know, I guess you've brought it up a couple of times of, hey, this could be my last dollar. This could be my last. Yeah. This could be my last practice. This could be my last season is, is a good mindset to have. But you'll see a lot of people make make a couple bucks, you know, have some success and then they don't come back because of that success. Yeah. You know, they say success can be a bad teacher because it kind of stops that hunger from yeah. from happening when the belly, you know, when the belly gets full. Any tricks, anything you would share with people out there from from not, you know, being able to get to a place where they're stagnant or complacent or comfortable, you know, that, that what do you do for yourself? Uh, just for me, like I I said it earlier, but it just let me hit on it a little bit more. It's just about the vision. Like, I'm big about setting goals, and I'm big about reaching those goals. Every day I set a new goal for myself, and that I'm reaching it. Even if I take a small step, at least I'm going in the right direction. I'm going for it. I'm every not, day you're setting goals. Every day I'm setting You got goals. something. Something that I want to achieve every day. And I want to, even if, like, just say what about the children's book. I want to touch. If I touch one child a day, I'm doing something. I'm helping out in some type of way, and I'm going in the right direction. And that's just, I'm setting a goal every day for myself to go in the right direction to become a better person, to become a better teammate, to become a better player on the field. And that's just driving me. That's driving me every day to become better. And that's just my whole mindset, my whole vision of everything. I become the best player I can be and just keep on grinding. Any Anything stand out to you about players, you know, now that – how long you been in the NFL now? It's coming on my fourth year. Four years. So coming up to your fourth year, so three years so yeah, far. I've been in three. In your three years – People that have come drafted at all different levels, undrafted, free agent, fifth round, third round, mm -hmm. first round, anything stick out to you about the ones that, that last, the ones that make it, the one, because they say, man, the NFL could stand for not for long. Mm -hmm. So w the ones that last, the ones that make it, the ones that succeed, 
even regardless of their draft pick status, you probably know some folks that that are ballers that are dogs on your squad that mm-hmm. were undrafted or maybe drafted late that nobody thought. Anything stick out if you could name a couple things and say, man, the ones that stand out other than talent or natural gifts, is there anything that stands out about the people that do well versus the ones that don't? Uh, just some bullet points, I would say mindset for one. What Mind- do you mean mindset? Mindset is What just, type of mindset? You can just tell that when someone has a dog in them. You can tell when someone is hungry for success. You can tell when someone is never feeling complacent, when someone always feel like they have a chip on their shoulder to go out and to go do something. When they set their mind to do something, you could tell, okay, he set his mind to do it. I'm going to just watch him do it. If it takes five years, if it takes one year, if it takes one month, he's going to go out there and do it no matter what. And he's not going to quit. So that's just the mindset, I would say, to the work ethic. I'm just constantly working. He's never uh, feeling complacent. Like you said, he's not one of the type of guys, okay, I made it. I don't have to do this anymore. Okay, I... I, 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 made, I made two picks this week. I don't have to watch film this week. Okay, I, I, hit a, I made a big hit this week. I don't have to lift this week. It's always, okay, I got to do this again so I can keep on doing this. And it's just the mindset. Consistency and the work ethic. Yeah, it's just consistency. Outside of practice, right? Mm-hmm. Because you got, you, well, you got to bring a certain level of intensity in practice. But practice time, we all know when it starts. Mm-hmm. We're all done it whenever it's done. I would assume it's what's going on outside of the practice that really starts to to, to really dictate that work ethic piece because you know if practice is a certain amount of hours we're all out there practicing now you could bring a certain level of intensity certain level of energy to it but i would imagine that work ethic really kicks in when nobody's watching when when it isn't a scheduled practice what are some of those ways that people show that work ethic outside of practice i'm gonna just speak on minka right now because minka he's one of my close guys on the team um, he's probably one of the guys that's the first in the in the uh, building, and he's one of the the last guys out of the building. I love hearing and that. He's constantly just working on his body. He's in the hot tubs, cold tubs. He's watching film. He's doing all this, that, and the third just to become a better player. And you can just tell that he he loves the game, and that's just something that makes him a great player. And no matter how many picks, how many plays he make, he's constantly going to be doing that. And you can just tell, like you love that. You love to see. A guy that you're playing with doing that every day. And it's just something that you guys play together back there, right? He's a safety too. Yes, sir. With you. So that probably pushes you a little bit I'm to see you, him doing to, that. Just to see him out there doing it, just you want to pick his mind now. Once you see someone do something and have success doing it, it's now like, okay, let me just pick his mind and see what is he thinking about. Like what drives him and that's just the same thing. Just his whole mindset about everything is that he always feel like he can get better. And that's just big. Love it. So to to, to wrap it up. You got a new album. You new just album. came. You just came up first with. First quarter. We've been banging first a little quarter. bit over here. Yeah. First quarter. That's where. Uh, so so if they they could go any any platform. Any platform. Spotify. Apple. Music, Spotify, Apple Tidal, everything. And and YouTube, the, just first quarter. First quarter. Okay. First quarter. You can find it. It's something that I've always been doing. I finally put it out. I'm gonna have something new dropping. Uh, summer times, but it's coming out. It's coming. All right. How would they be able to find you to connect with you, follow you on social media? All of my social media platforms is real underscore island six. You can fo- follow R E L L underscore island six. Okay. And you can follow me on anything and I'm right there. How about the kids books? The kids what if they books. wanted to grab some, some, uh, some kids books for the kids? You said that's kindergarten to third grade is, is ideal. Mm-hmm. Sharing the values from each one of the brothers had five values that mm-hmm. they put into into this book for children mm-hmm. uh where would they go about is there a way that they would be able to find that you can look that up on amazon so you can look it up okay. it's called my brother keeper what it means to me and it's by the e-boys so you can type in either one of our names terrell trey or tremaine edmonds and it, it, you'll just see it right there it's, it's under the sports book so uh definitely something and it's moving well on amazon now love it brother well you know we're gonna support you here and oh, hopefully some of the listeners out there can uh, can also support. We appreciate you taking some time out to jump on jump nah, on with us on the grind cast, you guys brother. For having me, man. Always a pleasure. Definitely. Always a pleasure to see you. So Definitely. thank you, Terrell. Appreciate you. No problem at all. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the grind cast. Get ready, it's a new day. Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Trying, trying, told, trying, told him I'm a beast, bud.